Hi, and uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be tackling a subject today, which is a universal subject, and that is the power of prayer. And there are many people around the world that, in different faiths and religions, and even non-religions, that pray. And we all are probably not very good at it. And some people don't believe in prayer at all, but I'm sure, as I think about it, that there's probably hardly anyone, atheist, agnostic or Christian or otherwise or other faith, that hasn't at some time in their life prayed. And so what I'm going to share with you today is from a school of prayer that I once attended at the Great Street Church of Christ many years ago with my pastor Frank Hunting. And I'm going to share one part of it, and I'm going to put links underneath where I'm going to be reading from the notes this is part of a Bible study in printed form, and I've also got uh, recorded tapes of this whole seminar, I guess, if you like. It was spread over about five days or five or six sessions anyway. And uh, so I'm going to share with that, share some of that with you. You might find it helpful. You might find that what I'm talking about is no more than what uh, some people call the power of positive thinking. But uh, you might find it interesting whether you're a Christian or not. And even if you don't apply the Christian part of it, you might find some helpful in some of the things, some help in some of the things that are said here in trying to deal with the, the trials of, of life as they, as, they, um, as they happen to us along the way. So um, I'm going to uh, just start off with a little bit of a, and I'm going to be reading from the screen here, so my head will be turned that way more than this way most of the time. So the um, I'm going to be talking uh, about... Uh, this subject and before I start I'm going to say something about the hind do you know what a hind is because this is relevant to what we're talking about today the hind is a female deer which lives on the rocky crags of high places its hind feet are always exactly placed not a fraction of an inch forward backward or to the side where the front feet have been it can see where it places its front feet if its hind feet did not track exactly where it had placed its forefeet, it would automatically it would quickly crash to its death. In fact, the uh, the animal um, can do that automatically. It's programmed that way so that its hind feet of the hind actually land exactly as they're going down the the precipice or even going up. Their feet track together, and that's why they can maintain their balance. So. I first met Frank when, as I said, it was at a school of prayer he conducted, and this study was part of it. So, it's called Hind's Feet. That's why I talked to you about the hind at the start. Or, the alternative um, title for this part of this uh, prayer seminar was Getting the Subconscious Mind to Believe with the Conscious Mind. This talk deals with reasons why we find it so hard, and there'll be in the, the notes down, you'll be able to read all this on my blog, well, I put this up years ago on my blog, so you'll be able to read all of this uh, as I've appended it below um, when you go to the uh, link to my blog on the same subject many years ago, which is what I'm reading from at the moment. So, this talk deals with the reasons why we find it so hard to exercise faith in many situations and circumstances at the very time the need to do so becomes the greatest. We believe, that's those of us who are Christians, we believe God is almighty, we believe God is all powerful, we believe Jesus when he said, and this is from Matthew 28, 18, all power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and on earth. As Christians we can believe these things very definitely and without any trouble. But when we read from John chapter 14 verse 12, we read this, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will himself be able to do the things that I do. And he will do even greater things than these because I go unto the Father. We cannot put into practice and we fail to do the things Jesus did and we are baffled about doing greater things. How many of us, when we are confronted with hopeless situations, begin to operate on what we've just read, John 14, 12, and do in fact do the works Jesus did or even his greater works? 
How many of us do? This study is to deal with the trouble, the factor that causes us to be unable to believe when we are confronted with some hopeless or impossible situation. The next heading, the reason why we can't believe. The reason why we can believe with the conscious mind God is almighty, but we are negative and defeated and paralysed when confronted with an impossible or hopeless situation is because our subconscious mind is not tracking with our conscious mind. Our subconscious mind doesn't believe God can work in that situation. That God can change these people, control their circumstances, or heal that sickness. The subconscious mind is a modern psychological term. Jesus often spoke of it, but he used another term. He included the subconscious mind when he sometimes used the term heart. Here's a few examples. This is from Matthew 12, 34 to 37. And it's Jesus speaking in all these quotes. You brood of snakes, you have to look it up to see who the brood of snakes were. How could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For a man's heart determines his speech. And a good man's speech reveals the rich treasures within him. An evil-hearted man is filled with venom, and his speech reveals it. And I tell you this, that you must give account on Judgment Day for every idle word you speak. Your words now reflect your fate then. Either you will be justified by them or you will be contemned, condemned. From Matthew fifteen nineteen to 20. For from the heart, once again this is talking about the subconscious, from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, lying and slander. These are what defile, but there is no spiritual defilement from eating without first going through the ritual of ceremonial hand washing. The emphasis here is on what comes out of the heart. Matthew 18.35 Forgive from the heart. And if you, you should look up all these in context. This is how my Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Now the point I am making, Frank is making, about the subconscious mind tricking exactly with the conscious mind is seen in these following passages. Mark 9, 21 to 24. 24. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. So this is starting at verse 21. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered, and it has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, Jesus said, Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately the boy's father explained, exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. And then in Mark 11, 22 to 24, especially verse 23, where we're talking without doubt in the heart. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt it in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. And from 1 John 3, 19 to 21, This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not contempt, condemn us, we have confidence before God. So there were some passages that he was sharing about the heart, relating that to the subconscious. Why? Another heading, why the subconscious mind doesn't trek with the conscious mind. The subconscious mind is outside the control of our conscious mind. We cannot control it, make it believe, order it to do what we want it to do, but it can and does control us. Over the years, most of us have been sending down into the subconscious, not faith, positive reactions, or confident, confident attitudes, but fears, doubts, negative attitudes about ourselves and others, worries, 
anxieties, unbelief and feelings of guilt and inadequacies. I can own up to all of these. These build up the deep down block in our subconscious mind. They stay in our subconscious where we cannot know them or recognize them. We have these things in our subconscious that says this, God cannot work in that situation or that person. Nothing can change that circumstance or condition. So when we try to exercise faith, doubts, fears, unbelief, anxieties, negative attitudes keep coming up, preventing us from believing with all our hearts. And remember, as we read before, we must believe with all our hearts to move the mountain in our experience. Now we come to hind's feet. And I'll just repeat some of what I read before. The hind is a female deer which lives on the rocky crags of high places. Its hind feet are always exactly its hind feet are always exactly placed, not a fraction of an inch forward, backward or to the side where the front feet have been. It can see where it places its front feet. If its hind feet did not trek exactly where it had placed its fore, fore feet, its front feet, it would quickly crash to its death. Our subconscious minds must trek exactly, track exactly with the faith of our conscious mind. If we cannot order our conscious mind, unconscious mind, or consciously control it and make it believe, what can we do? Another heading. We can cleanse and train our subconscious mind. How? Number one. We can deal with our conscious doubts, fears, worries, anxieties, guilt, by admitting to them, listing them, and taking them to Jesus. Number two, we can welcome the doubts, the fears, the worries, the guilt, the subconscious floats up into the conscious mind in the twilight of consciousness, such as when we are waking up or are half asleep in the night. And instead of pushing them back into the unconscious, we can fasten onto them and give them to Jesus. Just as an aside, sometimes in the middle of the night, if I'm troubled, I will play some scripture, and uh, which is in effect replacing all the troubled things I'm having in my dreams or in my thoughts with the positive things that I'm hearing from the Bible. So instead of pushing those things back into the unconscious, we can fasten onto them and give them to Jesus. We can take Jesus down memory lane into all of the rooms of our various experiences and years we have lived through and let him take down from our walls of our memory rooms the unhappy memories of or happenings of the past and they replace them with his own lovely pictures. Frank says this is best done with someone who knows what to do and takes us into each room of our lives and I know that Frank did some of this in his counselling. He had a long counselling ministry with people uh, over many years and I was one of his recipients of his counselling. Not along those lines exactly. So number four, these are the things that we can do. We can invite Jesus into our unconscious mind and ask him to set it in order, tidy it up, cleanse it of all that is undesirable. He can and does work at levels in us below our consciousness. The Holy Spirit is doing this work. Number five, we can deliberately and as constantly as we should feed great thoughts of faith, positive attitudes, confident reactions into our minds to be passed on down into the subconscious. How do they get from the conscious to the subconscious? That's a good one, isn't it? Number six, we, could const we should constantly stretch the mind to take in all of God. Let us challenge situations. Let us challenge situations that are too big for us by taking into trouble to see how much bigger God is than the situation we think impossible. 
Now, a lot of people just dismiss the idea of God at all, but I'm talking to those who don't dismiss that. Another heading, very important. In these studies, it is very easy to get overwhelmed and say, I can never do all that. It is far, far too much for me. I've said that many times, but I still keep plugging away. You have been learning what you will do to take into various quiet times. A quiet time for a Christian is that morning, in the morning or the evening, when you spend some time with God in prayer and reading the scripture and listening to God. So you have been learning what you will take into various quiet times and over months, yes, and over years, you will work out what you need to do. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12, in the Moffat translation, that's another translation of the New Testament or the Bible that you might not have heard of, Paul says this, I am learning bit by bit. That is how you will learn. You are determined to make John 14, 12 real in your experience. You are not going to live defeated, lackluster and lack power prayer lives. So you'll work away steadily over weeks and months. Letting God train you, letting him make you the person he can really use. And I should add, he can set you free from the many hang-ups that you may have. I'll just go back what I some of what I said earlier. I have tapes of Frank's School of Prayer and notes from his day as a pastor and counsellor. And many of them I have digitised and some of them I put on my blog and also on my YouTube channel. I was a new Christian in 1974 when I met him for the first time and attended a school of prayer at our church. Over the years, the many things he taught including this subject, I have seen to be more and more important to the Christian for the Christian to grasp. We don't automatically become new creations at our new birth. Although many people believe we become a new creation, but we do have the resource within to allow God to deal what's with what's below. As Frank has outlined above, so that our predispositions and personality defects can be transformed. If we walk in the light, we can become new creations. It's a process. Our salvation is a process. I was saved, I am saved, I am being saved. There's also going to be a link here of this particular one when I flick you through on my blog to this, to a sermon on inner peace <coughs> that helps illustrate some of these um, uh, points that we've been making here. So I hope you found this useful. I'll probably put this on my main YouTube channel and maybe on my Christian YouTube channel. And uh, it's not for everyone, but some of you, Christian and otherwise, might find it helpful. And uh, if you are in the habit of meeting in Bible studies with your group from your church, there'll be enough here and enough links for you to actually print out what I've been talking about and have a discussion with your Bible study group. See what you think. So once again, thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you wish, and I'll see you next time.